Welcome everyone, my name is Jacob Hess and I'm here to take you from zero to engineer. So now that you understand what IP addresses are, how to convert binary to decimal, what a network ID and a subnet mask are, let's go ahead and talk about the class system. And I did this last because it is something that you need to know, but now you understand what a subnet mask is. So you'll be understand so you'll be able to understand what a default subnet mask is because our classes give us some of that information. So what is a class? IP classes provide a default mask based on the number that you see in the first octet. So just by the number you see in the IP address or the network, you can tell what the class is and what the default mask is. Now this system was used before we ever had this thing called subnetting. So right when IPv4 was released, this is how it was done. It was done strictly by classes, but they soon figured out that that wasn't gonna be enough network IDs and we had to come up with something better and that's where subnetting came in. And we will discuss subnetting in another lesson. You'll learn how to do it in detail. But this is the way it started, just with classes, right? So we have something called a class. Then we have our first octet range of numbers. And then we have our default mask. These are the things associated with IP version 4 classes. All right? So our first class is class A. And the range is 1 to 126. And that gives us a default mask of 255.0.0.0. So what do I mean by 1 to 126? Well, when we look at an IP address like 192.168.100.0, or that would be a network ID, but when we look at an IP address, the first octet is that first number you see there. So 192 in the one I just gave you would be this first octet range. Well, that doesn't fall into this range. What's one that does fall? Well, like 10, right? 10.0.0.0. That's a class A address. And what this tells you is that the default mask for that address is 255.0.0.0. So right off the bat, you know there's going to be a 255 in the first octet of the mask. That's anything that starts with 1 all the way to 126. So let's look at class B. Class B is 128 to 191 in the first octet, and that's 255.255.0.0 in the default mask. So if we had an IP address that started with 129, and it was like 129.0.5.10, well, we know by default that's a class B default, and it's going to at least have this mask before subnetting, 255.255.0.0. It has to be at least, at least of that. All right, so let's look at class C. Class C is 192 through 223. And class C is, uh, gives, you, gives you a default mask of 255.255.255.0. And these are the way all networks were determined in the beginning, in the, in the early days. We only used these, these ranges in the very early days. But again, we soon figured out we needed something more, and we came up with the subnetting that let us turn these defaults into further subnets, break these up into more networks, many more networks, right? So again, the first octet range is this range of numbers here. Now, you may have thought, Jacob, you missed something. Where's the 127? <laughs> no, I didn't miss it, guys. It's like that on purpose. 127 is loopback. So anything that starts with 127 in the first octet is a loopback address, meaning literally if you ping anything that starts with 127 from your computer, like if you open up your command prompt, well, let me go ahead and do it right now. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to pull up my command prompt here, which I have, and we are going to ping some loopback addresses. So what is a loopback anyway? A loopback is, means basically you're pinging yourself. So literally this entire range that starts with 127 is all for loopback. So we can ping the first address in that range, which is 0.0.1, .0 .0 and we'll get a reply. We could also ping any other address in that range, like 127.55.67.89, and we'll get a reply. Even though I don't have that address, because you can't assign that address to anything, it's a loopback. All these are pinging the same thing. They're all pinging just me. They're pinging myself. 127.127.127, we can even ping that. We're going to get a reply. Again, this is pinging myself. This is what loopback is. Um, we can also ping the last address, which is 127.255.255.254. And ping that. That's the very, oops, i got to put ping in front of that. Ping 127.255.255.254. And we're getting a reply. So you can literally see this entire range of addresses, which is a lot of addresses, is all taken up by this loopback range because it begins with 127 in the first octet. Now, there is one number you can't ping, and that is 
127.255.255.255, which would technically be like the broadcast, I guess, for the loopback. <laughs> but that won't give you any responses, so just so you know. But anything that you actually ping that starts with 127 is like pinging yourself. All right, that's what loopback is. And there are two more classes, right? We have class D and we have class E. Now class D is for multicasting. If we do any multicasting, work with multicasting addresses, we'll find that they start with 224 through 239. There'll be some address in there. And that is used a lot in networking, like with streaming video and stuff. We talked about multicasting a little bit. So that's class D. And then we have class E, which we actually will never see. And that's anything from 240 to 255, 255, 255, 254. And that's for experimental research experimental research and if we had all two five fives here that's the broadcast to all networks broadcast for all networks is when you have all two five fives so we generally only think about class a b and c because those are the only ones that we can subnet but we do need to know what class d is and that's used for multicasting we won't ever be subnetting with anything that starts with these numbers we're only going to be doing subnetting and creating networks out of things that start with these numbers here that's why they're separated in our list you do need to know what the loopback is. You do need to know the range for class D and the range for class E and what they are used for as well. Multicasting was class D and class E was experimental research. And again, class A was 255000 in the default mask. Class B is 255255000 in the default mask. And class C, the default mask is 255.255.255.0. And those are our IP version 4 classes, guys. Remember these classes. Remember these classes. All right, and here's a quick recap. We learned that binary really is just ons and offs, and we saw that because we looked at a switch. Remember the one and off, one and the zero on a, on a on a switch where you can turn something on, turn something off, and how that relates to binary. Cool tip there, cool information. So it really is just ons and offs, zeros and ones. We converted some binary octets into the correlating decimal format. We also looked at an entire IP address in binary format, right? An entire decimal IP address turned it into binary. We also looked at how an IP address is truly 32 bits in length, and it was composed of four binary octets, right? Four octets, each containing eight bits, and eight times four is 32. That's why it's truly a 32-bit long address. We also learned how to make a binary doubling reference chart. All right, I guess there is a name for it. We'll give it a name. It's the binary doubling reference chart. <laughs> Remember that chart, guys? Starting from right, going to left. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And that can go well into the future. This is something you're going to get good at. You'll get, I'm going to try to show off here. You'll get good at doing things like this. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16,384, I believe that's right, and then 32,768, and then 65,535, and then I think that's as high as I can go. All right, <laughs> that's as high as I can go. Well, you don't ever need to remember anything higher than that. But these numbers, these doubling, oh, these binary doublings, you'll understand how you see them all over IT when we get into networking. You'll see them in many different places other than just IP addressing. So it's a great chart. Understand this. Learn it. It's the only thing you need to know how to write down, and you can do all your IP addressing and all your subnetting. Man, it is so great. The binary doubling reference chart. All right. We gave it a name. We also learned about network ID and how it's related to the subnet mask, right? We understood. We learned how you can take your, your subnet mask, and you can learn what your network ID actually is given an IP address. We also learned how to calculate what subnet masks are in binary and also what they are in decimal. And we looked at what CIDR notation is, or classless interdomain routing, CIDR for short. And it's written like this, with an IP address followed by a slash and the number of bits in the subnet mask. And then lastly, we wrapped it up with learning what the IPv4 class system was and the default mask associated with it. And this is a good bit of information, and it's math, right? There's math associated with it. So if you need to, guys, feel free. I mean, you know, make sure you watch the video again if you need to. Watch the video again, go through it, learn it, do the practice exercises. IP addressing is very important. Now, I will, well, there are things online that can help you cheat with this type of stuff. And that's okay. It's totally fine. But you do need to understand how it all works in binary. Don't just live off of charts and things that you find online. 
Do you need to understand how to convert binary to decimal, et cetera, et cetera? Everything we did in this lesson. All right, end of my rant, end of the recap. Let's go ahead and wrap this up, guys. So that was our IP addressing lesson, guys. And I hope you got so much out of this and that you truly understand what an IP address is now and why we have all these ones and zeros and what this binary all means. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.